guys are having a great day and let's see if we can make that already great day even better. Many of you have been missing my old series, We Can't Make This Stuff Up. And many of you have also been missing our friendly neighborhood lawyer man. Hey, that's me. So I figured, why don't we play around with some things and see if we can find a compromise. So usually on We Can't Make This Stuff Up, we pick a topic and I get stories from you guys to share your experiences related to those stories. Sometimes I just tell them, sometimes I make a little skit out of them. Since we have two people, I figured maybe we'll take turns telling each other stories. And since we have two, maybe we'll do 20 instead of 15. But today, we're gonna look at icks. What's an ick? An ick is kind of like when you're on a date with someone or talking to someone and something they just do or say is just immediately no, immediately a turn off. I'm not interested in dating anymore. I wanna go home. Do I have any icks? No. no. I wore my cheek magnet socks just for this episode. Oh, that's wonderful. Anyways, we should probably get back to the episode. I asked my Facebook and Instagram followers, hey guys, what's a time that someone just gave you the ick? And here are 20 of y'all's stories. I'd been dating this guy for a few months when Valentine's Day came up. This guy said he hated Valentine's Day, all because of all the consumerism behind it. He said it was just a marketing ploy to get people to buy gifts for no reason. Teach their own. I personally do like Valentine's Day, but I get his thought process and I can't make someone care about a holiday. Well, the day of, we were at my place watching TV when his mom called. She called to thank him for the flowers and chocolates he sent her for Valentine's Day. When he hung up, I asked, hey, uh, I get you don't like Valentine's Day, but if you were willing to do something for your mom, I don't see why we couldn't do something small together. This man went on a full tirade about how dare I think I deserved as much as his mother, that I would never be an equal to her and I needed to understand that now. Oh yeah, I kicked him out immediately. Never contacted him again. Definitely was not interested in that kind of dynamic. What a good son. <laughs> All right, number two. This girl I was seeing invited me over to her house. We were a little younger, so she still lived at home at the time. It was her parents' house and her twin brother was also there. They started play bickering and teasing each other, which is fine, that's what siblings do. But then it kind of got a little weird. They started full on wrestling, like hands all over each other, grabbing, doing different kind of wrestling moves and then laughing about it. It was odd. It took an even worse turn when he patty flipped her and then she went about teabagging him. Then their father came in and I thought, oh, finally, someone's gonna come in and break this up. I'm gonna get some relief. No, that's not what happened at all. He just started encouraging it, like full on WWE yelling, yeah, get her, get her. It was so strange. I had to walk out the door immediately. I didn't even say goodbye. Oh my, what in the Game of Thrones? They seem close. <laughs> like a TV show about that. <laughs> I don't, you know what? I probably would have walked out too. I'm very close to my brother. I'm not that close to my brother. <laughs> this girl I've been seeing came over to hang out and as she pulled up, I was already outside taking out my trash cans. She gets out of her car, looks confused and asks me, uh, why do you have two trash cans? I said, oh, I only have one. One of them is my recycling bin. She started giggling and said, oh, you're one of those people. Those people? What? I didn't even know what to say. I just kind of asked, is recycling supposed to be a bad thing? She just kept laughing and kept making fun of me for recycling. Recycling, seriously? Who makes fun of someone for recycling? It was just kind of weird. I quickly lost interest. I guess she knows how it feels to be recycled. <laughs> really weird thing to get on someone for. I don't understand it, but whatever. All right, number four. This girl invited me over to her house, and the moment I walked in, I was just overwhelmed with some of the worst smells I had ever smelled. In the living room alone, there was at least four dogs, five cats, a couple ferrets running around, some rabbits, and then three bird cages in the corner. I love animals, I do, like a lot, but this was just too much for me. I don't know if it was a cleanliness issue, 
or this is just what happens when you have all those animals in one small living room area. I hope she's living her best life with all those animals, but that just can't be me. I had to excuse myself and then just kind of left. I love animals. I do, truly, more than people. You want some ferrets? No. What about a bird? No. You love birds. I hate birds. They're evil creatures. Absolutely not. And they smell weird. My brother once had one. Not for me either. I started seeing this guy after we bonded over both of our fathers passing. We often discussed the grief process and shared our struggles with that. One day I was supposed to go to his house and I got off of work a few hours early. I tried to call him and tell him, but he didn't answer, so I just headed over. When I knocked on the door, you'll never believe who answered it. Beetlejuice? His father! Apparently, not only was his father alive and well, but he lived with him and paid for all of his expenses. I guess he just always planned when I was coming over around when his dad would be home, and when I told him I got off early, he was in the shower and didn't see the message. Who lies about their dad dying? Like, no, I never spoke to him again. Maybe it that's was disgusting. A no, no, that's that's so gross. I can't with people sometimes. Mm -mm. That's probably someone not to hang out with much anymore anyway. Mm -hmm. nope. um, Number six. I was on a date with this girl, and I thought it was going pretty well, till I excused myself to go to the bathroom, and then she followed me into the bathroom. I asked her, "What are you doing in here? This." isn't the ladies room and she said oh i thought that was code for you wanted to fool around and do some weird stuff and i said what do you mean that's not what i said at all i just needed to go pee and she said oh well go ahead i said what do you mean you need to get out she said no i like watching people pee so i'm just gonna hang out in here with you i said nope big red flag i walked out don't know if she stayed in the restaurant and had the rest of her date by herself. I couldn't pee in public for like two weeks after that. To each their own. To each their own. Not for me. Do you get, do you, are you a nervous peer? I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> like if you feel like someone's watching you, I don't know. Uh, have you, you haven't been in many men's bathrooms, I take it. No, I don't. It's just a line of urinals sometimes. I don't know. I don't know what goes on in men's rooms. I don't want to know. Maybe I maybe I shouldn't right. ask. You don't. <laughs> it's a secret club. Oh, okay. It smells too bad in there anyways. Sometimes. I had a guy come over and my dog loved him. My dog is really well behaved. He doesn't jump on people or nip or anything. He just likes to sit at your feet. Well, within 10 minutes, this guy says, uh, can you pick him up or something? I know you say he doesn't bite, but I'd just be more comfy if he wasn't so close to me. Immediately, no. My dog's part of the family, and if you can't deal with that, you've got to go. Facts. Facts. I, I, we don't have dogs, but like, yeah. These cats, wherever they're roaming. I get it, though. These cat. this is her house. Yeah. Yeah. All right, number eight. Freshman year of college, I asked out this girl to the movies, and she said yes. I was really excited, but when we got there, I was a little taken back. Her best friend also showed up, which I thought was okay, but kind of weird for a first date. Maybe she was worried I would be someone that was going to hurt her. I wasn't serious, because we did meet online. I get we live in a dangerous time, safety first, sure. It was okay. We had a good time, so I asked her on a second date. We went putt-putt golfing. I offered to pick her up next time, and she said she'd meet me there, which I thought was kind of weird because I could pick her up on the way. I just went with it. I get there and again, her friend is standing there beside her, waiting on me to get there. Apparently we were all golfing that day. I pull her aside and asked her if we were on the same page. She said, yeah, she loved our date and that she thought it was going really well. I said, okay, just to be clear, uh, are we ever gonna have a date where your best friend isn't here? Cause I'm only interested in dating you. She kind of giggled to herself and said, She's my best friend, we go everywhere together. You should really consider us as a package deal. If you're not comfortable with that, you can take it or leave it. I said, you know what? I think I'm just gonna leave it. I hope you guys have a really good time golfing, but I'm just gonna head out. Never talk to her again. Well, I hope that she finds someone who likes a third wheel for every day. Some people like tricycles. I took this girl out to a fancy restaurant because I really wanted to impress her. We had a really good time talking and just enjoying each other's company until the waiter came to ask me if I wanted another drink. And while I was talking to him, I saw into the corner of my eye the girl turn her body until she 
thought she was out of my line of sight. She started picking her nose hard, like really getting up in there. She then looked at what her finger found and ate it. I thought, no way. No way. My eyes are definitely playing tricks on me. Until I saw the waiter's face scrunch up in disgust. He saw it too. Okay, I'm not crazy. Lost my appetite. Wasn't interested in staying there anymore. Wait a second. I thought we already had a story about recycling. <laughs> oh, kids, that's just so gross. So I was in college at a party when I saw a really pretty girl. I went up to talk to her. She told me she was there with a different guy. I started to walk away when she grabbed my arm and said, you know, maybe you can just change my mind. If you beat him in beer pong, I'll go home with the winner tonight. I said, mm, no thanks. I'm not really interested in the games like that. Just turned away, walked out the door. I hate people like that. Uh, you know what? Some people like to play around at parties. I just, you know, feelings to me aren't games. And that's okay. It's fine to each their own. That's why it's a personalized Nick. Doesn't have to be a Nick for everybody. It's fine. No, if it was League of Legends. I would always lose. I would always be the loser. <laughs> this one wasn't the worst in the world. It just drove me up a wall. This guy I'd been seeing was really nice, super cute. I liked him a lot. The thing is though, I'm super sensitive to sounds. And this guy loved to crunch his ice all the time. He would order extra ice in every drink just so that he could sit there and <laughs> the whole time. I tried to power through it and just hope that maybe I could get used to it, but nope. After listening to it for three dates, it felt like nails on a chalkboard in my brain. And I never asked him about a fourth date. Poor guy, he's just enjoying his snack. I mean, that seems like a pretty common thing for people. You don't crunch your ice. Me. Don't you dare start. Don't you dare. That's why we have no ice in the house. <laughs> Number 12. There was this couple at our school and they had been together for about a year. They were super nice and everyone thought they were a good couple. Then one day at our science class, we were doing this little DNA kit when learning about genes. They were in the same group of course they were, and found out after the DNA results test that they might be a little more related than they thought. It ended up that they weren't super closely related, but they were about second or third cousins. Definitely enough to uh, get the ick and break it off after that. Felt super bad for them. They were a really nice couple. Ah, no, mm -hmm. that sucks. That really stinks. Well, they must not have been from the South. I went on a first date with a girl who in the middle of dinner, just started ripping her fingernails off her hand and just made a little pile of fingernails on the table. We were in the middle of eating. I tried not to be rude and asked if she just wanted a napkin to at least put them on so you know, they're not on the table. She said no and didn't seem to take the hint that it was bothering me, so I just never called her again after that. I guess the way that story was submitted, it sounded like she was just ripping her whole fingernail off. So I thought it was going to be worse. She was probably picking at her nails. That's like a very, that's a thing that a lot of girls do. That's yeah. much more common than ripping my fingernails off. That's how it's called. Like this, like if I were to just rip it right there. That's I so just, gross. You don't do that at the dinner table while people are eating. I agree. It just sounded like she was going to be bleeding everywhere. That would be even worse. Yeah, that wouldn't that just be an ick. That would be a psychological red flag. All right, number 14. I was at a dinner date with this guy. It was our first date and I didn't know much about him. We ordered a small snack before we got food, just a little shortbread and coffee. As the coffee and snacks were arriving, he looks under the table and pulls out a Nokia phone. Trying to make a lighthearted joke, I said, man, that has got to be the oldest phone I've seen in a while. He looked really nervous and kind of just started looking down and pressing buttons on the phone. I then again dug it in really deeper. Trying to break that friendly wall on the first date, I said, man, can you even text on that thing? Does it have games? Is it one of those where you have to flip the phone up? Turns out it wasn't actually a Nokia phone. It was actually his insulin pump and he was trying to put in the number so he could take his insulin shot. He never called me back. Oh, she was the egg. Oh no. <laughs> so uncomfortable. Oh, no. Poor guy. Oh, I bet he was already so insecure about that. That sucks. That really stinks. This guy had been asking me out for weeks and 
I finally said yes. I figured I would just give him a chance. As soon as we got to the restaurant, he pulled out a bunch of $1 bills and just set them to the side of the table. It was a really busy restaurant, so it did take a few minutes for a server to greet us, which she apologized profusely for, and it was very obvious it wasn't her fault. However, the first thing my date said to her was, already starting off on the wrong foot, aren't we? If you want a good tip, you'll have to step it up the rest of the night to make up for it. And as he said it, he took some of the dollars off the pile stuffed them back in his pocket and winked at me as if this was cute behavior. Um, no. Immediately no. Absolutely not. Being rude to servers is the most unattractive thing someone can do on a date. I hate, I hate when people dangle tips like that. Like that is so rude. I can't. Uh -uh, I'm 100% with her on that. Absolutely not. Story 16. I picked this girl up for our first date and she looked absolutely stunning. We went out of the car, I opened the door for her and helped her in. All the right things, you know, what makes a good first date. By the time I got back to the other side of the driver's seat, this girl had not only taken off her shoes, she had put her feet up on the dashboard. You know, that was already kind of a turnoff, but then her feet smelled so bad as we were going by and she kept putting her feet in front of the air vent and turning the air up. It was so disgusting and honestly ruined the rest of my night. I truly wish I had just canceled and didn't even go after I saw it. Some pe people either really like feet or really do not like feet. And the, you know? That's, that's for another episode. <laughs> I was getting to know this guy who I really wanted to work out with. He was super kind and attractive, had a good job. We went for a walk in the park and we just started discussing all the deep stuff, you know, what we want to do with our lives, who inspires us and that's when he told me his biggest inspiration was Andrew Tate. I genuinely thought he was joking and laughed, which angered him. He told me, he said, way too many people write off Andrew Tate way too quickly. He's done wonders for men and their confidence levels. I said, Andrew Tate's very offensive towards women. Like, he literally said life was better when you could stone women for acting out in how women shouldn't be working. This man genuinely said to me, well, wouldn't that make your life so much easier? You spent all day telling me how hard you work, which is such a waste of time for you. Wouldn't you rather not have to do that? I said, no, I like what I do. I enjoy being able to work. He looked me dead in the eyes and said, guess you're just stupid and you can't really fix stupid. I immediately went home and blocked him on everything. Immediately, no. I hope this guy finds the right person for him one day. This guy was picking me up for a first date and when I answered the door, he hugged me and grabbed my butt with both hands. It was really weird. I was not a fan. I thought maybe he was just nervous and intrusive thoughts won over. We got in his car and I made a comment about how nervous I was thinking maybe it would make him more comfortable. And he said, yeah, I could tell you were nervous. I said, really? How? He said, well, I just grabbed your butt and you didn't even say thank you. I was shocked. I knew instantly this was not going to work out. So I just got out of the car and went back inside. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> my favorite. I'm spitting everywhere. That one's definitely my favorite. The audacity. Oh my gosh. Good for him. We were at a really nice dinner. The kind of restaurant where you order a steak or a salmon, you know, something fancy. Everything was going fine. We had ordered. I thought it was going great when he came up to the waiter and said, hey, can you get me a glass of milk Go with my steak? I don't know why it weirded me out as much as it did, but I knew right then and there that this wasn't going to be a long-term situation. I, listen, this is, this is a thing, okay? There are people who just drink a full-on glass of milk with their meals, and there are people who think that is weird. <laughs> I know. I used to do it with orange juice. No, I think orange juice is different. Orange juice is meant to be drank individually With everything but milk most people, a lot of people think that you can't put milk in things or like 
A lot of people think that milk just goes in things, that it's like an ingredient, not a meal. You know? And I stand by that. <laughs> All right, that was 20 icks from you guys. My favorite was definitely the thank you. Which one was your favorite? You're gonna need a glass of milk. Really? The last two were the best? No, I don't think it was. I think mine's gotta be between the uh, hearing aid one or maybe the wrestling one. Those were pretty bad. That one, the wrestling one just made me cringe. We would love to know which one you thought was either your favorite or the funniest or the most uncomfortable. And I want to know, if I do another We Can't Make This Stuff Up, what should the next topic be? Let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. I hope you have a great rest of your day and hope to see you all next time. Bye, my lovelies. Mwah.